know it's probably been keeping a lot of you up at night, uh, hoping and praying that Colorado does something about their funeral home regulations. Uh, A lot of people who are affected by this really probably do feel that way. Mm -hmm. Uh, But they finally done it. Colorado finally moving to tighten regulations on funeral homes after all of the scandals that we have been talking about. Uh, The shocking revelation in February uh, regarding Miles Harford, a former funeral home owner accused of keeping a woman's corpse in a hearse for nearly two years and the mishandling of cremated remains of over 30 individuals. Uh, it, it shocked a lot of people uh, in Colorado uh, as the, uh, the United States and the United States and anywhere that uh, it's not acceptable to keep a body in a hearse for two years. Uh, the state grappling with the aftermath of this and everybody going, what do you mean you don't have regulations? <laughs> <laughs> like you, you, you didn't like how how do you not have many regulations on this like every other state has kind of figured this out in the last 200 years um you might be something to pick up uh, colorado uh and of course there's the discovery of the uh nearly 200 remains in the abandoned penrose funeral home uh to the uh, sale of hundreds of body parts at an unchecked uh montrose funeral home uh yeah there's a lot. There's a lot of issues uh, in in Colorado. My favorite was the two. <laughs> my favorite. That sounds horrible. Uh, the does, but- the the one that was I think most shocking was the 200 remains uh, at that one where they were literally stacked on top of each other. That was what the back to nature funeral home or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Return to nature. I think um, where it was literally it was like stock shelves. They they basically got store shelves from like a closed down Kmart or something, put them up in their funeral home, lined the walls, and they started stacking bodies more than one to a shelf. Well, you'd have to do more than one to a shelf. I mean, it was a very small building. Yeah. If you took a look at it, it wasn't very much square. I mean, I don't even know how you would fit 200 human bodies in that building, to be honest. I mean, I guess you'd have to stack them. Uh, because standing up, I don't know that it would work, uh, nor could you do it with, I guess if you, if you tied them together. Uh, so if you like, did like a weekend at Bernie's kind of a thing, yeah, you could you did stack like, them. Maybe, maybe like that. Um, but, uh, it's, it's just, I, you know, I don't know if I'm more shocked by that one or the woman in the back of a hearse for two years. I'm going to go with the 200 bodies. Were people walking by the hearse? I mean, I'm kind of a looky loo. I might kind of peer in there. What were they seeing? Uh, Probably a casket with a body. I mean, you wouldn't see the body, but probably just the casket. Or is she she in a body bag? What is she? I mean, somebody had to walk by and go, what the hell is that? Were they complaining? I think there was complaints of smells on that one, too. Yeah, I think there was. I mean, I can't imagine the 200 bodies in the one. I mean, that, that to me, and they're literally... If you leave a body out and it's not like cremated or something, it's going to start melting basically yes. and, and, and melding to other things. So you yeah. got to probably figure that these bodies that were stacked on top of each other probably started to meld to one another. So when you're taking them out and you're like separating them, that had to be freaking horrific. Oh, like trying to pry a grilled cheese sandwich apart. I mean, just yes, I'm that's sorry. that's. Did a I good, just ruin that? That's a good analogy. It, it's probably like prying grilled cheese sandwiches apart. That's that's just, probably what they said while they were in there. Hey, Bob, this is kind of like uh, prying a grilled cheese sandwich apart. Well, it sure is. They were texting Who back wanted? and forth about you know food orders. <laughs> you remember that we covered that that they were texting back and forth about something that they wanted on a sandwich, and then you know. Uh, talking yes. about a body and then oh did you get my order i didn't want tomatoes or some crazy i don't think, crazy thing i don't think i could eat for i don't know a long time uh if if i came in contact with that even if i was prepared and knew this is what i was walking into i think that smell i think i'd just be in a toilet throwing up for days i i, I don't if you've ever smelled death and i know you have too it's like yeah. Oh, it's it's the worst. It's it, our, our bodies, our brains are programmed to know that that is the worst thing you want to smell because it's a danger. And it, it's 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 our caveman brain going. This is not safe. Get away from this because you could die, too. That's why we interpret that as something that horrible. Um, 
I guess for some, well, maybe that, they don't have Tony, that. That makes me wonder about them because they were in that environment. They were exposed to these smells and they were acclimated to it. Somehow yeah. they were, you know, they weren't wearing hazmat suits from the sounds of it. I don't know they how should you, have been. how do you acclimate to that? I don't even I know. I have no idea. I, there's no, I don't know. I don't know how you ever, ever acclimate to that. That's just. I get irritated when my cat's litter box needs to be clean and I've let it go a day too long. Yeah. I, so I can't imagine the smell mm-hmm. when you'd walk in that building, how they would actually even be in there for longer than a minute. Uh, any amount it's inhaling just one inhale i'd be passing out i think it's yeah well the proposed legislation senate bill 24-137 unanimously passed the colorado senate uh committee on business labor and technology on march 26 signaling a pivotal moment in the state's efforts to address funeral home mismanagement the bipartisan bill is now headed to the state finance committee for further review if enacted the bill would establish stringent mandates for operating a funeral home in colorado funeral directors would be required to graduate from an accredited mortuary science school pass the industry standard national board exam and complete a one-year apprenticeship similar educational and certification requirements would apply to other positions within funeral homes including mortuary science practitioners embalmers cremationists and natural reductionists i don't know what a natural reductionist is but it doesn't I sound no either is that like where you you just put somebody like under a tree or something and call it good I don't, I don't know. know. Uh, That's unique. I'm going to look that one up. I'm going to be a natural reductionist when I grow up. Uh, when the bill has garnered broad, while the bill has garnered broad support, concerns have been raised, particularly by funeral home operators who lack formal licensing but have been operating in the industry for years without incident. However, the bill includes provisions for. I was just going to ask this question, grandfathering in existing practitioners subject to specific requirements and oversight. Uh, Under the proposed legislation, licenses for funeral industry professionals would be subject to renewal and would require ongoing education to ensure compliance with evolving standards. The bill also outlines disciplinary measures, including license suspension and revocation for noncompliance or misconduct. So there you go. They're going to like kind of handle it like everyone else did. Well, and here's the other issue, too. And I I did look up natural organic reduction. I'll get to that in just a second. When you take a look, you know, driving down the road, you're heading to your hair appointment and you're going to your cosmetologist All and the time. they're dealing All with the time. hair. Well, if you're a chick, probably. <laughs> um, so, you know, they're dealing with hair color, perm solution, all that. They're licensed. Yep. They are required to do continuing education. Mm-hmm. Uh, they are required to dispose of their materials in a proper way. And yet they just drove by a funeral home in Colorado that, eh, yeah. fuck it. Yep. And and they've got worse chemicals. They have formaldehyde and all kinds of yeah. horrific substances in these funeral homes. And, and granted the, you know, return to nature or whatever, they probably didn't have those chemicals there, but what they were doing this maybe they were reductionists i don't know yeah but it it wasn't a legit way to do it so um i just looked this up a natural organic reduction is a process that gently transforms a body into nutrient rich soil <laughs> now i'm not do you just like put grandma under the a tree in the backyard and just wait for nature to take its course i don't know there must be some sort of process i don't know if it's using um, some sort of maggot or I I don't know. I don't. <laughs> some I'm, sort of maggot. <laughs> well, because they can decompose yeah. organic material quickly. That's true. You like you put the body in a bucket with a bunch of maggots and then <laughs> set it and forget it. <laughs> then oh, boom, Tony. boom, you have dirt. <laughs> well, but it's an organic process, isn't it? There's no chemicals involved. It uh, it very much is an organic process and no chemicals involved. But wait, there's more. If you call no. right now, you're going to get <laughs> your 72 pounds of maggots and a 80-gallon bucket so you can turn your loved one back to nature. But if you call in the next five minutes, we're going to double your order. We're going to give you a second bucket and a second supply of maggots for the same low price of $39.99. That's right. 25 easy payments of $39.99. If you call in the next five minutes, double your order. 
But we're not going to stop there. No, we're no. going to we're going to give you we're going to give you the Ron Popeil juicer system. It's these lovely little plastic juicers you just jam into an orange and you squeeze and suddenly juice comes out. At least on the infomercial it does. In real life it doesn't really work. But no, it doesn't work that way. But we're going to throw those in <laughs> for the next 25 callers. And if you call right now in the next 60 seconds you're not only going to get maggots, you're going to get mealworms as well. That's And these are authentic mealworms that have been actually harvested off of the body of Ron, oh, po- of, 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 of Ron Popeil himself. Stop! Oh, no! That's right. The same maggots who ate Ron Popeil and turned him back into dirt can turn your loved one into dirt as well, while you sit back and enjoy a nice cup of OJ. I voluntarily took a job with you. You realize that? Yeah, you did. <laughs> you did. But wait, there's more. No. There is still more. How could there possibly be more when it's already so good? You call right now. We're going to throw in the Time Life music collection of James Ingram. So, while you're sitting there watching your loved one decompose and be eaten by the mealworms that also ate Ron Popeil, you can have James Ingram. Your face is beaming. That's good, OJ. You are so bad. I think that's Ron Popeil's ear. Why didn't the maggots eat that? I shouldn't have gotten that. Yeah. (laughs) That's, um, that's it. So... So, you know, not to get rid of your infomercial, but yeah. I did find out that they actually do a cremation of the human and they put them in the soil. Isn't that called just spreading ashes? That's what I thought. <laughs> it's like, Why do you have to pay for this? I, it's called spreading ashes. That's a cremation is what that is. But, but they do talk about they're optimizing the conditions for natural microbes and beneficial bacteria. I'm betting there's worms involved. And there's also Bobby Brown involved because when we give you the Time Life music collection of James Ingram, you also get the best of Bobby. Included with it, mealworms that were on his ex-wife, Whitney Houston. Okay, I'm taking your buttons away. (laughs) Step away from the board. Did we go too far with the Whitney? Yes. Okay. Officially. Yeah. If there's anybody left listening to our podcast at this moment, I'm sorry. Uh, well, you know, you know what it is. <sighs> there you go. I'm just saying that's a great offer from Ron Popeil and Time Life Music. I'm glad they collaborated. It's a collab, as they would call it today. Yes. So well, there you go. Hey, you need a little levity. This was a really crappy story. And, and I'm do. hoping that Colorado does something about this because... This never should have happened in the first place. No, it shouldn't. Uh, Let's see how many other uh, grandfathered in folks get busted. Want to listen ad free? Want advanced access to all of our interviews before anyone else? Become a True Crime Today Premium Plus subscriber on Apple Podcasts. You get every episode commercial free. So you can binge on True Crime. Until you can binge no more. Search True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts now. Or go to our podcast page and sign up now. More of the Hidden Killers podcast next.